Old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller and in a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, how we doing, Boise State fans? Welcome on in Bronco Nation News Live special edition today. We are live at Boise State as we uh, get ready for football practice here in just a few minutes. So we'll see who walks by the parking lot. We got Jay Tuss scheduled to join us shortly. Uh, so going to talk some Boise State football, going to talk a little Boise State basketball as well. We got some more roster shuffling on the way. So uh, appreciate everybody for checking us out. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Manny. Quentin, Dune, appreciate all you guys for uh, checking us out this morning. Hopefully the signal's okay. We are uh, trying this for the first time, actually. We are uh, tethering this through my phone. So we are uh, broadcasting live via 5G uh, T-Mobile on my phone uh, for a live broadcast here at BroncoNationNews.com. I also don't have the proper microphone with us, so hopefully uh, we can make this work today. Uh, we got John Mallory over here. Uh, I, I He didn't know I could see him over there. And he, it took him about five minutes in the mirror to put his Mariners hat on. Uh, here comes Johnny Ballgame. You want to say hello to the people yeah, here, Johnny? coming through well. What's going on? Getting ready for practice. Bright and early. It's going to be a beautiful day on the blue. What? John, Johnny loves his free his free gear, man. Johnny loves his free gear. Gloria Navarez. She was good, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Gloria Navarez was on KTIK. You can hear the podcast. But uh, Johnny, not contractually obligated to come on today. So he got out of there pretty quick. But uh, signal is surprisingly good. Happy to hear that. So we are uh, broadcasting from my truck. There are coaches. There are people looking at me as they walk by. We are in the uh, athletic department parking lot here uh, at Boise State. So we'll see who uh, we'll see who walks by. Who's here? I think Jay Tuss is about ready to go. We'll bring him on in. There he is, Jay Tuss. How we doing, Jay? I'm good. How are you, bud? 
uh, we're testing this out. I wasn't sure what to do. Do I stay home and do the show? Do I try to get downtown here? And uh, so far, the 5G on my phone appears to be working okay, uh, folks are saying. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're right outside uh, Albertson Stadium, Boise State, getting ready for practice today. We got some football news. We got some basketball news. Uh, I thought it was going to be colder than it is. Surprisingly, a nice uh, Tuesday so far here uh, for the outdoor full pad practice on the blue today. They'll be in full pads today. Uh, and then shells on Thursday. And then Saturday will be that uh, first scrimmage. I know we don't get to watch the first scrimmage, Jay, but what what are you uh, – wanting to hear about after the first scrimmage, I guess, on Saturday, or as this week mm -hmm. continues to move forward for the football team here, we're just about, I think today's practice seven. So almost just about halfway through spring ball right now. Yeah. It, it's so difficult how to, to kind of judge what you want to see out of spring, right? Especially in Boise state is missing so many of their key contributors, a number of starters who, as we have continued to hear are working their way back from off season injuries. But um, I mean, whenever you have a quarterback competition, controversy, conundrum, whatever you want to label it, I think you just are always interested to see how that goes. And I mean, maybe a simple one is, you know, it seems like Maddox Matson has really exceeded expectations with what he's been able to do so far. Uh, as he comes back from his own season ending injury from last November, Spencer seemed like he was optimistic that maybe by the end of spring ball, Maddox would be able to get in some 11 on 11 or something like that, some team. And so when does he actually work his way back into, into the rotation, you know, in, in a full contact or um, quarterbacks probably aren't always, you know, in, you know, full contact, but when does he just kind of work his way back into being able to compete in, in that type of scenario? So I, 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 man, the way spring's gone for him, I would expect it to be sooner than later, but um, he's just a competitor. So that's something I, I would, uh, I would, you know, will be one of the first questions I will ask when they get out of the scrimmage on Saturday, I would say. Yeah, no doubt about it. So many uh, questions we move forward. And, and again, we're not able to watch the scrimmages, Jay, but there has been a nice change where we've been able to watch uh, most of the other practices. So I uh, just joked with John Mallory. He's heading in now, be heading in after the show here. Uh, but we do get to watch pretty much the entire practices that are not the uh, the scrimmages. Uh, we missed two while we were all in uh, Las Vegas for the basketball mm -hmm. tournament. But uh, being able to watch start to finish and, you know, there's some stuff we can't report, can't videotape, whatever, but for our mind and uh, for me personally, it's been great to be able to see the, the you know, not just the, the, the stretching and the individual drills, we're getting to see a lot more team drills. And I think that's uh, hopefully going to pay off in terms of all of our coverage and all of our uh, informed opinions and guesses, I guess, as you can say, as we're watching things moving forward here. So that has been a nice change from Spencer Danielson, letting us watch the, the practices. And so today and Thursday, we'll be in there watching the full practices. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, I know we've talked some about this, not a ton in terms of special teams. That's one area I'm going to be looking at because I know it's not really the sexy thing and you feel really good about Jonah Dalmas. You feel really good about James Ferguson Reynolds already, but seeing the impact that Stacey Collins has made coming back. And I mean, they literally have like a logo and shirts and hats and it feels like star players like Latrell Caples are buying in to special teams and they're wearing those hats and shirts with pride uh, for the special teams units. And I know, you know, the exact numbers, Jay, but it, it, last year they just kind of punted, you know, punted, you know, on special teams, didn't really try to return kicks, didn't really try to return punts a whole lot and just kind of uh, didn't want to screw it up instead of trying to turn it into a game-changing play positively. Sounds like they're going to be a lot more aggressive with the returns. Stacey Collins was one of the top uh, teams at, at Penn State in terms of returning punts. And like I said, I think special teams, which for a long time here, Jay, was a huge reason for Boise State's success, went a little bit away the last couple of years, not necessarily the kicking and punting, but some of the other areas. I'm interested in special teams and Stacey Collins' impact. Because watching some of these practices, watching some of the special teams periods that we don't normally get to watch, I think that could be a huge difference for this team this year. I agree with you. And you look at, yeah, their, their punt return numbers uh, in particular last year, they returned eight punts all of last season. Um, that's one of the fewest totals in, in all of college football. Uh, they, they fair caught a lot, right? And if you look over the final, what was it, six games of the season, they returned exactly one punt. That That's it, man. And so uh, I agree with you, and it might really seem like a silly thing to point out or acknowledge, but these guys are showing up to our interview sessions watch, wearing, wearing their uh, SWAT team, special teams, you know, apparel, 
Uh, Latrell Caples had a T-shirt and a beanie on the other day. And again, I, I I know like maybe some people's reaction to that is how is that going to help them return punts or or be more dynamic? It shows that there's a massive emphasis on it right now. And I think that um, there you can tell or, or feel that there's a, a competitive fire to make a, a contribution on special teams. And whether that be Latrell or, or other players, I mean, Spencer Danielson said that when it came to some of the return positions, they had a wide open competition, meaning if you felt like you could be an impactful returner, you got a chance to do it, right? And so the the, the net they casted was much wider than maybe in years past. And I, I just think that shows that they are searching for answers and searching for impact players, uh, whether it be kickoff return or punt return, because they just weren't impactful last year. And yes, I will add this, BJ, and I know that we've talked about this before. Injuries had something to do with it last year. I mean, they were down to their, at times, third, fourth, even fifth string punt returner and on kickoff where, you know, they, they just weren't willing to risk it. So they they just ended up fair catching even kickoffs and things like that. But I, I think that is an area where Boise State has a chance to make a massive jump. And when you consider James Ferguson Reynolds and when you consider Jonah Dalmas, I mean, there's no reason when you have those two guys along, uh, alone, you shouldn't have one of the best special teams units collectively in the entire country. And that's why bringing in Stacy Collins, I think, was such a huge get from Penn State. I'm, mm-hmm. I think fans would be super excited. Again, again, I mean, is he going to make Ferguson Reynolds and and uh, you know Jonah Dalmas like light years better? No, those guys are already All American candidates. But he's going to find some things. Tyler Ross is doing a great job in there as well, working with those guys and just the scheme and just the aggressiveness and just getting more star players on special teams too. I think is uh, going to pay off for them. He's Jay yeah. Tust. I'm BJ Rains. This is Bronco Nation News Live. It's Tuesday. We appreciate all you guys for liking us, uh, subscribing on YouTube, Facebook, X, all the different uh, areas where you watch our shows. I am down at Boise State getting ready to head in uh, to practice here uh, in a little bit. And then we'll have some interviews afterwards. Uh, I've got a one-on-one schedule with Ty Benefield. Looking forward to catching up with him. I know Breezy Dubar, some other players getting ready to talk as well. As always, if you have some questions, some comments, put them in the ICCU YouTube chat. We'll get to those um, in the uh, YouTube chat. That's the easiest way. I believe we can take Facebook and X comments as well, but uh, prefer to just kind of keep it to YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on X, We would prefer you start switching over uh, exclusively on YouTube. You can turn on your notifications so you know when we go live. If we're ever late for a show or we we start uh, early or there's an unscheduled broadcast, you'll know we're live based on the uh, notifications there. I am in the uh, mobile Cutwater Studios, more than 35 flavors, pre-mixed premium cocktails, by the way. You can pick one up at your local gas station or grocery store. We appreciate Cutwater Spirits. Jay, we got a couple questions coming in here. Seth T wants to know, any chance that uh, they pick up another player on defense? He says they still need a playmaker. What do you what do you think of the playmaking abilities? Are they lacking anybody on defense? Any, the portal does open again after spring, I guess during spring ball next week. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, needing to still add to the defense, or do they have enough there? Um, I mean, depending on the position, you'll always you'll you'll never say no to a talented defensive lineman or something like that. But uh, you know, I, I I think that maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I think they do have some playmakers coming back. I mean, we're not we haven't seen. Um, Ahmed Hassanin because he's you know he's working his way back from an injury this spring but between him and Andrew Simpson you got a chance to really you know concoct something special with defensive pressures and get after quarterbacks and those two guys alone should make Boise State's defense very very competitive this year so um, how they complement those guys yeah that'll be that'll be interesting but you look at the secondary a ton of experience back there uh, certainly interested to see how they utilize some of their safety depth whether that be Zion Washington or Ty Benefield because they also have Alexander Tubner and Rodney Robinson back. I mean, they're 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 really really deep at that safety position. So how do they utilize that and play to the you know use that to their strength? I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm I don't think you ever say no because there is going to be some roster fluidity without a doubt. That's just the way that college football is these days. So if you find the right guy that you feel like can complement your stars, yeah, you try to add him. Sure. By the way, shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Strawn, Prince Strawn's uh, parents. I'm sure they're yeah. watching this. Uh, we had a chance, Jay. I think we're talking to Prince after practice today. Um, always enjoy that. Looking forward to that. But we had a chance uh, at one of the practices last week uh, where uh, Mr. Strawn and uh, Mrs. Strawn came over and introduced themselves to us. We got to meet his brother who's uh, playing in the NFL. And uh, they were uh, very nice. But when I told them Jay Tuss was over there, they could not believe it. 
and I brought Jay over, and they uh, got to in, in, uh, talk to Jay a little bit. But uh, very nice folks. They said they watch us from the Bahamas every single day, and so I'm sure they're watching right now. And uh, to the Strawn family, appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you. Looking forward to Prince this year. And, and uh, man, I'll say this about his brother. You know, Obviously, you're an NFL player. you got to have pretty good size. But, man, Jay, his brother mm -hmm. was massive. And yeah. uh, you just think about the development Prince could make in the next couple of years as well, uh, thicken up a little bit. And, and I mean – but uh, cool family, you live, you know, living in the Bahamas. I said, so how far are you from the beach? He said, oh, in the Bahamas, you're 10 minutes from everything. And he was, uh, you know, they just really uh, are, seem very, uh, you know, happy for their son. Obviously, they miss him, but uh, they're they're following it from the Bahamas. And a pretty cool story that I think this year uh, could take another step if he, you know, takes that next step and ascends to one of the leading receivers on this team like we expect to happen. Yeah, what a cool, humble family, right? That just seemed so happy. And it was really um, – you know, the you know, the dad's first time of, of getting to come to Boise and check out Prince and the Boise State football program. And they say that they're gonna be back, you know, once fall rolls around and hopefully they'll be able to catch a you know a Boise State game and a Carolina Panthers game because as you just said, Prince's older brother Michael is is now with the Carolina Panthers after spending a few years in Indianapolis. So that is like a such a fun story. And what if what a talented family, BJ, because you have one son in the NFL, you have one son that's, you know, playing at one of the more prestigious, I would say, you know, college football programs in the country. And then their youngest son is also super talented. He's got a few years to go until he gets to college or whatever, but apparently he's the quarterback of the family. So a really, really talented group right there, BJ. No doubt about it. It was cool to meet them. And again, they said they watch every single day from, uh, um, and they even said the, you know, Mr. Strawn even wanted to meet Johnny Mallory for some reason. I'm not sure why Johnny, you know, was, I, I'm sure Johnny would have loved that as well. But, uh, for some reason he, he even brought up where's Johnny Mallory. And I said, Oh, he's not here today, but uh, we appreciate them uh, for watching another question coming in. I do want to get to the basketball roster here uh, before we get out of here, Jay, but uh, Bronco one thirty wants to know about our thoughts on the right tackle situation. Uh, that is, uh, you know, the one spot, obviously Roger Carrion is out this spring. Uh, Mason Randolph's been, been working his way back. So they have some other guys out there, but you expect cage Casey at left tackle. Some of the other guys at their positions, um, you, you, you think four of those spots are, are pretty much counted for, um, by the way, there's Tim Duryea pulling in. Maybe we can just talk to him about the basketball news, uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, just, just your thoughts on the right tackle spot. That is the one kind of area that once we get the guys healthy that are supposed to be back and get a look at all that. We, we kind of feel like right tackle is the one spot they're looking to fill. Yeah, but that's also, I mean, it's such a much better scenario than they've been in the past years, BJ, where you do feel like they were kind of searching for answers, especially on the offensive line. Um, and, and what I, I guess what I mean by that too is like multiple positions. And right now, man, they, they're just in a great spot on the offensive line. You really feel great about, you know, four, four of the five. And then you just kind of have to figure out who you want to plug and play at that right tackle position and granted they're losing a you know an nfl caliber guy that played that spot last year in uh Cade beresford but they have options you know and we'll see who who rises to the occasion but they certainly have options and they certainly have length at that position and uh, it'll be interesting to see you know if it's you know rick moore kyle cox see you see who decides that they can throw their name into the hat and play that position i know uh, Jason Steele received a lot of praise, and so it'll be interesting too if you if you find somebody that you feel like is better positioned to be a guard. You know, Ben Dooley's played out at right tackle before, so do you get super creative with that? And uh, you know, I, it's funny because we ask coaches uh, a lot about you know who they see lining up where on the offensive line, and and we just get a lot of coach speak, man, about where, how it's kind of positionless right now, or they feel like they can move guys around. Um. I do feel like that's coach speak. I do feel like they have a pretty good idea of who's playing where, but I do think that it suggests how versatile those guys are on the offensive line. Some of these guys are really long, athletic, and can play multiple positions. So Tim Keene's going to have to figure out, you know, exactly how he wants to get his Rubik's Cube to look when it comes to his offensive line. But I, I think it's a very, very promising position for Boise State entering the 2024 season. Cade Rice entering the transfer portal. That's got some fans wondering what's going on behind the scenes. We'll talk about that in just a second here. But first, want to remind you, 35 flavors of premix premium cocktails, Cutwater Spirits. We're in the mobile Cutwater Spirits. I'm literally standing in the parking lot uh, here 
outside Albertson Stadium. Cutwater Spirits, again, more than 35 flavors, pre-mixed premium cocktails. Pick one up at your local gas station or grocery store. Rowpaint.com, the official paint and coatings company at Boise State Athletics. They painted our entire house last week, did an outstanding job. So check them out, roepaint.com. They're scheduling for those concrete coatings, whether it be your back patio, your garage, your basement. Transform it in one day. I highly recommend it. We've had it done twice, roepaint.com. ICCU, Idaho Central Credit Union, the best in the mobile e-branch online banking. Again, I, I've had an account for a couple of years now. I really wish we had made the switch earlier, Jay. We're just so happy with Idaho Central Credit Union. ICCU.com, all your banking needs. And again, you go in to sign up and you really never have to go in. You can do it all remotely. So easy to use. I wish we had made the switch sooner. Check them out, Idaho Central Credit Union. Ridley's Family Markets, check them out. they got about 14 locations across the state of Idaho, surrounding states. ShopRidleys.com. You can download their app, save up to 40% at the checkout line. Find a location near you, ShopRidleys.com. Bowser Real Estate, number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley is Matt Bowser. Couldn't be happier with Matt and Kelly and their team helping us out as we get ready to put our house on the market and look for a, a little bigger house for the Reigns family here. And uh, I'm finding out firsthand just how great the service is at Bowser Real Estate. So check them out, BowserRealEstate.com, the number one ranked realtor for a reason in the Treasure Valley. Check them out, Bowser Real Estate. Dot com. And of course, Lithia Ford of Boise, LithiaFordBoise.com. They're back as the hole in one sponsor for the golf tournament. I'll tell you more about that in a second. But uh, LithiaFordBoise.com, view their full inventory of vehicles, and you can uh, go in there, find the one you want, test drive it, and be on your way in a couple of hours. So get a lot of the research and stuff done ahead of time. Full inventory is online. They got some great spring specials going on right now. And again, three football players, Andrew Simpson, uh, Ahmed Hassanin and Matt Lauder all driving Lithia Ford vehicles as part of uh, NIL deals. So check them out, LithiaFordBoise.com. I mentioned, Jay, by the way, May 31st. I hope you've already requested off, requested child care. Uh, we need to see you and uh, Johnny Mallory uh, re, re, uh, redoing this picture again from last year. Um, excited. May 31st, the Friday after Memorial Day, the BNN Golf Tournament. Uh, it's going to be bigger and better than ever. I know we had a lot of fun uh, last year at the tournament, a lot of celebrities and uh, former current Boise State players got out there. The new uh, wave with NIL deals. We can do some cool things, uh, Jay, bringing everybody involved. We had about 10 players from last year's team. Who would have known Maddox Madsen on the far right there? What, what his season would have turned out to be uh, after that? So uh, Jonah Dolmas, I've already talked to, is coming back. And the big news we announced yesterday, Jay, Spencer Danielson will be making an appearance at the tournament. Also the uh, event the night before uh, for the uh, pairings party that we're going to do on Thursday night. So for the first time, uh, we got Spencer Danielson, some of the football coaches involved. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. Uh, Jay did a great job up on stage there doing the Q&A and stuff last year. So, uh, Jay, um, appreciate that you've been involved the last couple of years. There's Lithia Ford. There's Leon Rice. Uh, at the uh, given, They are giving away the, the car again, Jay. So if Camille needs another vehicle, just drop one in on hole six, and you can be uh, good to go there. Uh, but uh, I'm, just, May, I'm just trying to win Andrew Simpson's Bronco. That 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 looks pretty close, pretty similar. Yes, that is possible. So uh, again, foursomes are on sale now. We're almost already halfway sold out in one day. So it's May thirty first, the Friday after Memorial Day. Hope you will uh, sign up today. Don't wait. It's going to fill up. But always a fun time out there, Jay, with uh, some fans, some celebrities, some boosters, and a uh, nice course at Timberstone. And uh, going to be another fun time this year. Yeah, man, I, I look forward to it. How many how many years is this again? Is this already only three? The, man, I feel like we've done this more. Yeah. This I feel like we've three. done it for longer than that there, but uh yeah, looking forward to it. It's a blast. So Tyson Degenhart, I believe, is gonna be involved again. He did the celebrity shot last year. We're working on finalizing that. He also had the uh the Degenhart dozens out there for breakfast. So uh looking forward to it again, May 31st at Timberstone. And don't wait and uh, sign up now. Uh speaking of uh Bradley Smith, you saw him in one of those pictures. Also, don't forget, he is back on third, uh, Wednesday this week. It's going to be on Wednesday this week, Jay. Uh, they're going to be uh, – Riley's traveling back to Boise. He's been back home visiting his family. So, Wednesday, tomorrow night, 8 p.m., Kent Riddle and uh, Riley Smith talking football. Don't miss that. It's been a really cool show. I believe DJ Shram is going to be their special guest. That will be 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday night on Bronco Nation News. All right, let's talk a little basketball, Jay. Uh, there was some some talk, some questions in here about the roster. Um, Cade Rice entering the transfer portal yesterday, I think was a surprise to some, just assumed with his dad, he would just stay on the bench as a walk-on, be here, you know, for the, the four years. But uh, you know what? He thinks he's a little better uh, than, than the playing time that is going to allow him to have at Boise State. 
and he moves on. I talked to him yesterday. I believe he probably did too. Uh, but he is looking for uh, just a little chance to just a chance to play a little more. He's excited about already getting some interest from some Big Sky schools, some Big West schools, some WCC schools. Whether that's going to be scholarship walk on, I, I don't know yet. But um, he just thinks that uh, he's already been here at two years. Got to play two years with his brother. It's a good time with his brother moving on for him to try to better himself out on his own and away from this system and, and uh, Cade Rice uh, moving on. But again, has nothing to do with his dad taking another job, which a lot of people uh, right away jump to Jay. Leon Rice was in the building yesterday working at Boise State. They're working in the transfer portal. They're trying to work on the schedule, the roster. Uh, nothing more than Cade Rice wanting to try to improve himself, but I still think it was a little surprising to some. Yeah, I mean, just because, yeah, it's, it's Leon's kid. Like, and I know that Leon likes to call his kids by their numbers to uh, maybe maybe try to uh, I don't know reduce the affection for them or something I don't know I don't know the tactic there but <clears throat> yeah only, shocking just because of that uh, outside of that I think it's awesome that you know Cade wants to look at this situation and um, realize that you know he he wants to try try to do more in his college career and that has to and that means getting uncomfortable but let's not forget too like. Cade left Boise once, or, or you know, or, originally when he was in high school. He could have stayed at, um, you know, Bishop Kelly and wrote out his playing career there, and then figured it out. But you know, uh, I think it's cool, man. Cade Cade shows that he's willing to be the the younger one and get a little uncomfortable. And he went to Link Academy, and now he's going to leave the city of trees again and and try to go find a place that he feels like he can be a contributor. So it's good on him, man. And I can't wait to see you know how he develops as a prospect moving forward. But uh, there, there, there's nothing more to read into this, folks. This is just a, a college basketball player looking to find a, a good opportunity that will allow him to play more minutes. So that uh, it's really as simple as that. The name is just is just a coincidence at this point, BJ. I've been on the record saying this. I think you have too, Jay. But I mean, the, 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 the there's only a certain number of jobs that I think would be super intriguing at this point for Leon Rice. Obviously, Gonzaga, if that ever were to open up, which we don't think would happen. My understanding was Washington was very intriguging. Oregon, I think, where he worked at one time would be appealing. But, but Leon Rice isn't leaving for Louisville or leaving for some of these other jobs. I, someone asked me about USC. I don't think Leon Rice is a fit at USC. It's not nothing against Leon Rice. Maybe he's going to be announced tomorrow as the USC coach. I don't know. But I just – I don't um, – I, I think he's set on returning and he's back and the other jobs that were open. I don't think Washington state is appealing for him right now. Um, just given the, the, the state of Washington state basketball, the conference they're moving into, it's no disrespect to them, Jay, but I think you can make an argument what he's got rolling here at Boise state's a better situation than they're right now. So yeah, you, um, you, all the, all these jobs, BJ come down to it's, you got to find the right support system and you got to make sure that that supports there. And if it's not, then it's just not worth the risk. It's not worth the gamble unless somebody wants to pay you an exorbitant amount of money where you just say, hey, forget it. That that guaranteed money is going to give me a nice little retirement. But um, yeah, I, you, you really got to weigh a lot of factors here. And unfortunately, it, it pains me to say, but just kind of knowing what's going on on the Palouse right now, that that is just a really tough job to to sign up for it was, it was already tough when they were in the Pac-12, but at least you were had, had the benefit of being in the Pac-12. And you know, I just I hear about, you know, potential salary cuts and things like that up there. And it's just it is a it's a tough time to, to be a Washington State Cougar right now. OK, a couple things. First of all, Jay, uh, people are misunderstood uh, on some of this. He was a, uh, a walk on. There's Sam Winter over there. How's it going, Sam? Uh, he was a walk on. He was not on scholarship. And Jay, he played 24 total minutes last season in eight games. I think he got five games in the Vanguard game, and I know you said it was pretty cool that he at least got in the scorebook at the yeah. Division One level. Dude, seriously um, though, like I, I really do, I, I really do mean that. I mean, that's like <clears throat> even if you were zero for one in the MLB, man, you got the MLB at bat, you are in the history books forever. So I, whatever, man, he got he he hit a free throw against Vanguard. He is a Division One uh, score that will that will always be something he can claim. So with that said, yes, that is pretty cool. And But again, he played 24 minutes. He was a walk-on. Uh, Cam Martin's brother, by the way, I am not expecting him back. Um, he is a walk-on also. I believe he's going to stay in Boise and focus on his business. I don't know if that's been announced yet. But again, Cam Martin's brother, also a walk-on, Jay. So not necessarily a, uh, you know, you're losing a walk-on. Maybe you try to find another walk-on, but and no disrespect to Cade or, or to Alex Martin. But these are not scholarship players. They do not open up more scholarships. That they're, 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 um, they're, they're walk-ons. Um, 
our hosts are heartless. John Reagan says, um, when your own kid quits on Rice's program, that stings. I do think Rice would take another 500K from Pullman at this point. His family is empty nesting, if I'm not mistaken. John, not really sure how to respond to that. Um. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it would take a lot more than 500K. And honestly, I don't even know if Pullman, if Washington State has the 500K anymore. Like, I, I don't know how competitive. Kyle Smith was only be. making like 1.3 or 1.4 million. Like Leon Rice is making a million dollars now at Boise right. State. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if I don't know if they can go up as high as they would need to to you know solicit somebody to to go to Washington State and and by the way now be a part of the WCC. So I think I just think there's a lot of coaches that are either going to view that as a backwards move or a lateral move, and it's why they have to kind of go in a, a very specific direction right now of a younger coach. That I mean, I saw reports today that. It looks like they were, you know, uh, very intrigued by Montana State's current head coach, and apparently Montana he State is down. Is he turned them down. Is yeah. Leon Rice taking that job? I, 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 I really doubt it. Like I said, and without the Pac-12 money there, like I just, I don't know if they can now be, uh, you know, I don't know if they can incentivize it enough to get someone like that to go there and 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 out, you know, the the risk outweigh the reward or the reward outweigh the risk. I guess you could say yeah. when it comes to a potential contract. Now, I will say this, Jay. I talked about this when when Max was done. He says, can't blame Cade for not wanting to have to listen to the nepotism noise. It's a little different, I think, when you're a walk-on. You get one or two minutes a game as opposed to, you know, Max Rice playing 36 minutes. And I am in the parking lots. So maybe I should say this a little bit quieter because I've already seen Sam Winter and Tim Gurrier walk by in the last, you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, but they'll never admit this, Jay. But, like, Leon will never admit this. But, like, I don't, you know. They're going to miss on the court for Max, no doubt. They're going to miss, you know, what Cade brings to the table. Having your son around is probably the greatest thing in the world. I'm sure for Leon, has been the best two years of his coaching career, having yeah. his two sons around the last two years. With that said, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world from a just outside thing, outside noise, whatever, that he now no longer has to worry about. Fans complaining about his kids playing too much. The dynamic in practice, the dynamic in the games, that just – I don't even know if distraction is the right word because they handled it pretty well. But that was always mm -hmm. the easiest thing. The easiest thing when Max would miss a couple shots was to go ahead and just say, oh, his kid's playing too much. It was the easy excuse. And I know he doesn't listen too much to the fans and some of that kind of stuff. And I, I get it. But I just I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that that dynamic. They had their six years with Max. They had their two years with Kate. It was great. And now you just kind of reset and you don't have to. I don't even have to worry about that's the right word. And I don't know if I'm making any sense with what I'm trying to say, Jay, because I, I, I'm not saying it's good they're gone. I just think from that outside perspective, mm -hmm. uh, outside noise, criticism, I'm playing as kids too much, whatever. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that that part of this, that layer is, is not no longer an issue now. Yeah. They'll miss max when they go on the road next year at Albuquerque and uh, they don't have somebody that can just explode for 35 points um, and, and carry them to a victory. <laughs> they'll, they'll miss max at that point in time, or maybe oh, yeah. Bronco nation will realize that, but I, I do kind of get what you're saying. And you know, that, that family, I, I think they've been in the game so long that I don't think it's anything they worry about, but maybe next year, BJ, when, you don't hear the noise. Maybe that's when the, the, the first time you kind of realize, like, oh, I guess it's not there. Like, I don't think it's anything that they would try to avoid or anything like that. But maybe that's when you just kind of realize, I guess it's no longer there is when the noise is is no longer there next year. And it's really I don't funny. Know what fans too. are like, going to about, man. What, what, that was know, always but, the number one thing is kids playing too much. I, I, and even when it comes to walk on spots and stuff like that, too, like. Look around, like who who's getting who's getting walk on spots like. When it comes to those, like just just chill out. It's not like he's taking a you know a massive opportunity from someone else or anything like that. Like you have yeah. to fill out your roster with and and sometimes BJ, you know, you're not even looking. I mean, yes, you're looking for the most talented kid to walk on, but a lot of those times, those are your those are your scout squad guys, your your practice squad guys, right? So you need them to not only be athletic but but mentally capable of of you know changing practice plans not not just week to week but multiple times a week and giving your starters and giving your main players really good looks and so that there you know there is a little bit of a, a method to that madness and so um yeah long long you know story short uh excited to see where Cade goes and, and how he does and how he performs and I think he'll find a nice little situation where he can carve out a role on a team somewhere 
Okay, so he does not open up a spot on the scholarship no. roster. My understanding is today, as early as around 12, 1 o'clock, there will be another scholarship available. Um, I think you can kind of put, you know, just look at the obvious candidates that this gentleman asked me to let him be the one to announce the news. So I'm not going to say anything, but there will be a scholarship opening up here in a couple of hours. When it comes out, Jay, it's not going to surprise anybody. I think you know who it is already, too. It's just um, it, it's just people looking for more playing time, looking for a chance elsewhere. And I don't think, you know, I wish it would have worked out with this with this guy here, but I don't think it's going to be something, you know, and no disrespect to him where fans are saying, oh, that's a massive loss. Um, and when you look at last year, Jay, when they traded Sada Ganga and Burke Smith and Pavel Kuzmanovic for Cam Martin, Omar Stanley, and Roddy Anderson, and now they're going to have three scholarships again when you look at Cade Rice – or sorry, sorry, you look at uh, Max Rice. Who are the transfers? Why, why am I thinking of Rice family? You obviously have uh, – Jace uh, Whiting. Jace Whiting. You have now this new gentleman today, and you already had one extra uh, because of Mosilla leaving and then Cam mm-hmm. and Max leaving. So you're going to have uh, three scholarships again. And, man, look, with the, I'm looking right into the sun. I can just realize how big my forehead is up close like this. This is uh, quite the angle here. Uh, but, <laughs> hey uh, – you look at the roster and what they could potentially do to upgrade again in the transfer portal. They got three opportunities now to make significant upgrades to this roster. Yeah, they do. And I think that, you know, we get, we get too caught up in, um, you know, judging players that, that come or go for that matter. But I just think you look at, you look at the results, you look at college basketball and, and this is just kind of the, the way that it all is right now. Right. So, if one player, despite the fact maybe he's talented and can do some things really well, if it's just not a perfect foot fit for him at this school, then he can go find it at another school. And on that note, Boise State can now utilize that scholarship to go try and you know perceive as a better fit, right? So um I'm 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 e- I'm eager to see what what that looks like. And I know BJ, you pointed out last year that you know Boise State did a pretty good job of um utilizing the scholarships that were vacated by some younger players and and adding some you know impact talent that that really helped the roster this year now they can do it again likely and they'll have three opportunities to do it they're they are going to have to worry about roster balance a little bit but i think as we speculated about this you know last week bj um and i agree with you here if, if there is a year where you go all in this might be the year where you go all in Sorry, I'm, I mute myself when you're talking, so I don't have all the background noise here. Jay, I got a name for you. What's up? Somebody asked. Uh, somebody asked on the. I can't find the comment here about point guard, and if the, you know what they're looking for in terms of are they recruiting another point guard potentially to come in here? What if yeah. I told you? What if I, I have not confirmed this from Boise State, so maybe I shouldn't be saying this. But what if I told you I got a little tip that a starting point guard in the Mountain West is just revisited recently at Boise State. I'd be, I'd believe it. I know that starting Mountain West point guard. Yeah, and I'll just I, go I ahead and say that the name that I heard is uh, Cardenas from San Jose State. Hmm. I heard that uh, Cardenas visited, and I heard that he's now on his way to Colorado State to visit there as well. Uh, he is an international player. There's no NIL money that can be given, yeah. which is why San Jose State recruited a lot of international players. But uh, he entered the transfer portal back on May, March 20th. Um, so I think he's a very interesting name. And again, I have not heard this name from anyone at Boise State. This was someone outside connected to the Mountain West and uh, potentially Cardenas that uh, reached out saying they'd heard he visited Boise State and was headed to Colorado State. I don't know how you'd feel about that. I also heard maybe the point guard from Utah that's in the transfer portal that also transferred uh, from U- from uh, Utah State when Craig Smith went there. Uh, Raleigh Worster, I believe his name is. Um uh, so they are looking at the, in the guard market and even at the point guard spot. So I don't know what that tells you potentially about Roddy Anderson or their thoughts there or just trying to create some competition. I, I, I mean, I think that Roddy's back next year. I think that they're trying to create competition. I think that you are now going to start to see, you know, some of these, uh, these portal guys probably start to make their visits to the schools that they're thinking of. So, you know, in the next week or two, I wouldn't be surprised if you start to hear more about guys, you know, visiting Boise State and exploring their options with the Broncos, which certainly seem attractive, man. Like, th- this is a very good roster already and a chance to be that final piece that, you know, helps this team get back to a fourth NCAA tournament and compete. 
for a Mountain West uh, Conference Championship and a chance to play with Omar Stanley and Tyson Dagan Hart and hopefully uh, Shabuzo Abo as well. So this is a really, really attractive place to be. And, you know, BJ, I, I think that when all of this initially happened with the transfer portal and all this stuff, I think that we we viewed, you know, interconference transferring, especially in the Mountain West. I think we thought, I don't know if I said, I'm going to say I thought that it would be anomal- an anomaly. But well, it used to be unheard of. You know, it wasn't allowed because yeah. you had to sit out the year. And now, now it's right. crazy. Yeah, you're having, I but, think what the Mountain West had two or three guys last year that transferred within the conference. And you yeah. could have many, many more here again. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just think that this is going to be something that is a bit routine now. I, I guess this is, is this, this is going to be, I mean, it's going to be stuff that happens and I'm not necessarily predicting this by the way, but I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the near future, you even saw Boise, uh, you know, Boise state lose a guy to another mountain West school, maybe to seek out more minutes or things like that. So I'm not necessarily predicting that. Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead there, but I, I just think that these are things that you're, you're going to see now become fairly routine. And it's a big reason why, you know, Boise State being competitive every single year in the Mountain West Conference is a big deal. You can sell it. Like if there's another really good Mountain West guard at another school, you can say, hey, man, you know this league well. You know what it takes to win in the league now. League well, we can surround you with talent and we have experience and a culture. And if you want to come win, in, or if you want to win games in the Mountain West, you know where you can do it, and that's in the city of trees. So, uh, yeah, that those are things that I think you're going to see, you know, just happen more and more often there, BJ. Hey, TacoBellWorks.com. Check them out. They're hiring. They'll give you free food. They'll give you half your wages the day after your shift. Check them out, TacoBellWorks.com. And, again, they are funding the endowed scholarships for the men's and women's basketball team. So return the favor. Choose Taco Bell for your next meal. Speaking of uh, Travis Ox, the Blue and Orange Store, return the favor there as well. Go check them out. Support them. Second floor of the Boise Town Square Mall, the Town Square Mall next to Pro Image, or you can go online. The Blue and Orange Store.com is offering free shipping for any order over $40. Free gear, the Blue and Orange Store. Uh, they're doing daily specials, all kinds of stuff. And you can go online, check it out, the blue and orange store.com. They got their daily uh, deals and all kinds of stuff. And they'll be giving away free uh, gift cards and things at the Bronco Nation News Golf Tournament. So we appreciate them. If you're looking for a job, how about TCS, Transportation Compliance Service? Check them out, transcompservice.com. Get into the trucking industry, all the permits and things you need. Check them out, transcompservice.com. It's a booming industry right now. I highly recommend you check it out. And Bronco Brew.coffee. Uh, I was over at Lean Feast the other day. They're now selling Bronco Brew Coffee in Lean Feast, so you can help two of our sponsors at the same time. Bronco Brew dot Coffee. It's fresh, roasted to order coffee, and I uh, highly recommend it. And within 24 hours, in most cases, it's roasted and it's at your doorstep in the Treasure Valley. So check them out, Bronco Brew dot Coffee. And I mentioned Lean Feast, healthy eating. Jay, it's April. I'm trying to get on track here before that golf tournament, before some vacation time this summer. So LeanFeastMeridian dot com. Over 10,000 meal combinations. It's all healthy. It's fresh. It is. Uh, you know, you go in there, you, you pick what you want, and it's all custom made. It's not frozen. It's all fresh, ready to go. And two minutes in the microwave, you're eating steak, shrimp, salmon, whatever you want. So check them out, leanfeast.com slash meridian. All right, Jay, I'm going to head on into uh, practice here. We appreciate you. Any any final thoughts on a uh, Tuesday uh, edition of Bronco Nation News Live? No, nah, man, it's going to be like 70 today, so it's going to be awesome. I can only hope, to, hope that the weather holds out uh, for Thursday so we can be outside on the blue once again. A, not a cloud in the sky right now. I had a jacket mm-hmm. on. I already had to take it off because I've been staring right into the sun for 40 minutes. But uh, Jay, <laughs> appreciate you. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, Cutwater Spirits, our title sponsor, Ropaint.com. Thank you to all the comments and folks on here that uh, make this show a little easier when we don't have anything to talk about. We love the comments and being able to add to that. Uh, so keep the comments coming and uh, appreciate you guys. Go support the sponsors. Go subscribe if you can, BroncoNationNews.com. And I know KTVB, Brady, and Jay and the crew will have you covered tonight with all the interviews from today. You can watch the various newscasts later today on KTVB and get all their coverage. We'll get the interviews posted to YouTube as well. And uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, John Mallory will join me at 9 a.m. We'll uh, do this again. So uh, thank you guys for checking us out. Come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. for John Mallory and I, and uh, we'll continue the uh, talk. My Cardinals, by the way, two and three. Nice win over the Padres last night. I think the Mariners won, right? M's got a dub last night. Right. Made it a little interesting, but we got one. Let's go. Are we going to St. Louis for the Mariners Cardinals series this year, Jay? Come on. You let me know. Gas up the jet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can work on that. Appreciate it, Jay. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you later. We'll see you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Bronco Nation News Live here at Bronco Nation News.